flight was, but you probably didn't go to the airport, right? I slept the whole I slept the whole way through the autopilot. I mean you guys have been doing this for a while. This is very, very cool. And thanks for being picked up for another season. We love having you on our on our stage with the children. So thank you guys. Alright. Now you can see there's two microphones here in the aisle. So what we're gonna do is just let you guys have some fun and ask the questions that you want to ask. How does that sound? <laughs> Alright, how should we do this? Just kind of point and point and roll? What do you guys think? Sure, let's do it. Feel free, right over here in the gray. <laughs> so, my question is for Melissa, why did you want to become Supergirl? That's a really good question. Um, to be honest, I was really scared to audition because I knew what a big responsibility it would be and that there was going to be a lot of pressure on my shoulders and, um, you know, I'd be held accountable and, and be a role model for people like you. Uh, but then that ultimately ended up being why I wanted to do it, uh, because I loved what Supergirl stood for, hope, help, and compassion, and I, I always think that there is room for that, more of it in the world. So I wanted to just spread love by playing Supergirl. <laughs> My question is for Melissa. Um, being a former cast member of Glee and now performing in Beautiful on Broadway, congratulations. Thank you. Um, you also work with Jeremy Jordan and in the crossover episodes have gotten to work with Jesse Martin and former Glee cast member Grant. Um, I want to know how often you break into song on set and what songs do you sing? Well, and he, and he can attest to this. Um, when Jeremy was on set, it was Kind of whenever we weren't doing a scene. <laughs> any, any time between cut and the next action was about, yeah. Yeah, sometimes even entire conversations would be through song with Jeremy. Um, and Grant is always dancing, he's always moving, no matter what. He doesn't even realize he's dancing and he'll be dancing. But uh, there's a lot of singing. And actually, it's, it's really sad without Jeremy there. I, I kind of sometimes will come up with some obscure musical theater song that I'll sing like from Sweeney Todd and no one else knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I miss him. <laughs> that is so much fun. I love it. I can just picture you guys like, okay, and cut. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Uh, mine was considering the Glee situation is um, how did you transition yourself from being on Glee to being Supergirl? Because they're completely different. Yeah, uh, there was, I had some time in between, which was, which was good, but they actually kind of, what I had the most difficulty with in learning Supergirl was the physicality, and when you put on a suit, you don't realize that you have to like, almost learn how to walk differently, and how to, your posture changes, and you have to figure out how you fly, and how you punch, and how you fight, and that was a big learning curve for me, so that was, I'd say, the hardest transition. Yeah, that'd be wild for anybody, right? Like, how do I want to make my entrance? How do I walk in these boots? <laughs> All right, that's fine. Hi. Um, I will, this is a question for both of you. Um, what was it like to be um, flying on the show for the first time? Just like having to experience that? <laughs> <laughs> the first time we flew together, was like for 13 hours <laughs> and it gets pretty painful <laughs> it's uh yeah that was a new experience <laughs> you lasted way longer than i did though. I, I, I had to call it quits and i like walked off like because <laughs> you guys are in a harness right yeah, yeah like the yeah. visual is there's a green screen and is it just a harness around your waist or yeah and believe it or not that's not comfortable after 12 hours <laughs> uh yeah I, I think i think the only reason i lasted longer is because i feel like okay i'm the new guy you gotta i gotta really put in like a good first strong showing uh, so like they took Melissa away. I was like, ah, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. And I'll keep going. Like, terrible decision. <laughs> uh, but it was. <laughs> but other than that, it was it was really fun. I, I mean, that was you know putting on the suit was surreal enough. But then you know to put on the suit and then have the wind going and you can actually feel the cape behind you. Oh, you're yeah. like, oh, that this is ridiculous. Okay, this is kind of cool. It <laughs> does feel 
really cool every time we do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. This side. Uh, this is from Alyssa. So if you could do anything on the last day on Earth, like what would you do and why? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. I like this question. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, that's a tough one. But the first thing that came to my mind was I, I tried to gather everyone that I loved the most and my dogs. My dogs would have to be there. Farley would be in my arms. And the pe my closest loved ones. And uh, just, I, I guess, have a party, play board games, and love each other. Thank you. These are really good questions. You guys are awesome. Oh, look who we have over here. Hello there. Go for it. <laughs> uh, I have a two-part question. Uh, one, what was it like working with Kevin Smith? And two, how does his style of directing differ from other directors you've worked with? Kevin Smith is one of a kind. He differs from everyone I've ever worked with, not just directors. He is so special and like as wonderful as you would imagine him to be. I was a fan of his before I started working with him, and he did not disappoint. And he's become a friend now, and like, I, he's just so full of joy and positivity, and he supports everyone around him with no judgment. Um, and working with him, you're, you always expect burgers or some kind of fast food. He's always giving people treats. He, every day he has a new toy for you or stickers, because he, he goes to like comic book shops and, and toy stores and shops for himself and for everyone around him. And then um, it's always like an 80s metal rock fest between takes. Like if there's not music playing, he's upset. <laughs> and it has to be like Black Sabbath. <laughs> Thank you. Like way too much fun. He sounds like a hamburger or like Ron McDonald. Totally. He's not real. Like he's a fictional character, but then he's he's just awesome. <laughs> this is so great. Here we go. Hi. Uh, so we have a uh, middle school library sci-fi fantasy club for kids, and uh, lots of Supergirl fans in that in that uh, group. And um, so they have kind of a two-part question. Um, when you were preparing both of you uh, for these iconic characters that you had to play, did you read a lot of comics or novels or anything to get into the character? And then the second question is, what like do you personally like to read? Uh, I, I read the new 52 comics preparing for Supergirl, but I also watched the Donner films um, and took most of my inspiration from Chris Reed. Uh, and in my daily life, I read, I just read. I love reading. I love, right now I'm reading a book about Henry VIII, but I also love Harry Potter. I'll read whatever. I read nonfiction. I love all of it. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, I actually, what I did was I watched the first season of Supergirl just to get a sense of uh, the tone and the feel of the show. Um, and that was, that was really helpful for me and just in the meetings that I had had with Greg Berlanti and the conversations we had had, it felt like uh, we were both kind of on the same page as far as what we wanted Superman to contribute to the world they had already created um, and to kind of be there just to support it and be a part of it. So that was, I, I think we were on a, a good place to start from the beginning. Um, and then my reading, yeah, I mean, I, I'm same, I'm kind of all over the map, but I, I tend to really enjoy uh, nonfiction. I love anything historical, and going back in time. And, uh, you know, we I did a film where our motto was kind of the more things change, the more they stay the same. And so I always find it very fascinating that, you know, at any point you go back to, there's always something you can kind of latch onto, like, oh, that doesn't feel so far off. Uh, connect with that. So, yeah. Tyler was born in the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Great question. Lots of readers in here. Yes. Hi guys. Thanks for coming. And Melissa, congrats on your engagement. Yeah. Did you guys watch Smallville or Arrow to prepare for your roles as Supergirl and Superman? Well, I had seen Smallville when I was younger, um, and Tom is amazing. Um, and 
they portrayed the, their version of the universe so well. Um, I hadn't watched Arrow, but now, of course, I since have. And Steven's a goober. <laughs> goober. Um, I, I have not. Um, I, I actually, I, I've said this a few times now, I, I, some people are used to me saying it, and some people I realize very quickly have not heard me say it, because it's usually a very strong reaction. <laughs> but um, I, did, I stayed, I kind of stayed away from it all as far as the other versions of the character. I just wanted to be able to go into it and know that what I was doing was just my interpretation of it without any influence of, oh, this is too similar or it's too different. Um, I really wanted to just be able to go through it with any impulses, instincts that I had and kind of commit to those. And if people said, like, well, that's really kind of too similar to what this person did, then I was like, well, I'm sorry, I haven't seen it. So uh, it's just genuinely my interpretation of it. So I wanted to have the freedom to do that. I know how my mind works, and I would have, I would have been a little bit too caught up with either trying to stay away from that or trying to get close to it. So I found it, I found it a little bit easier to just go in there, kind of with a clean slate. Thank you. Great question. I always am curious, you know, the backstory and how you guys do prepare. So interesting. I like it. Make it your own. Very authentic. Yes. Um, my question is, you guys tackle a lot of like really important issues on the show. What do you hope that you can tackle next? That's a good question. This, this season especially, we're really trying to uh, mirror socially um, the circumstances that we're dealing with in America right now. Um, I'm really proud of our writers' room. I think they're being really brave. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know how much further we can push the envelope. But what I loved the most this season is Dreamers uh, arc. And Cole Mains is such an amazing oh, role model. Exactly. And I think her story and what she has to tell the world is so vital and important right now. Um, and I think what she's saying to the transgender community is invaluable. So I think the further we go in that direction, I'm excited to see what happens. Yay, uh, I wanted to know what is the last crossover is your best moment because we know in the last Melissa you slept in the uh, during the crossover. So when I fell asleep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so in this, what is the the secret? <laughs> You know, I'm realizing that's kind of like a recurring theme. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot when that happened. That's not the only time. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've seen Melissa fall asleep multiple times on set. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm trying to think. We had a lot of good moments. God. The last prompt. It was just so, so fun. fun. Yeah, we had a really good time. I mean, any of the t any of the times where it was all all four of us was me, you, Grant, Stephen. Uh, what was it? Even like the late. Usually, I, I always kind of find the nights that last the longest, where you're kind of at some point going, okay, we can we can call this a night soon. Like that'd be that'd probably be a good thing. Uh, I always end up looking back at those nights, like, oh, that was actually kind of the most fun. Yeah. Uh, so like the nights where we're like out in downtown Vancouver till. Four or five o'clock in the morning. Slap happy and yeah, delirious. Just delirious. Usually and looking delirious. at Stephen Amell in the flash suit, like <laughs> <laughs> we made a lot of fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> and we've seen online like the bloopers and whatnot. Like, is that what the set is typically like? I mean, are you guys just cracking up the whole time? Well, you're not sleeping, of course. I mean, <laughs> just kidding. It was important. If she's not if she's not sleeping or singing, then I she's feel laughing. Like the capes yes. are what's always getting in the way sometimes to make yes. the humor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They're, because they're good for like flamenco dancing, <laughs> bowl riding, bowl fighting. Bowl fighting. <laughs> <laughs> there was we were shooting the episode where we have our big water fight scene, and I just remember at one point we got to the very end oh. of the scene and the last thing is like I think she like kind of like throws me off and I take like a step backwards. And for whatever reason, the cape under the water had slipped underneath my foot. And so I stepped back, and my heel went down on it, and it was just tight enough that it kind of like paralyzed me where I was. And Melissa's looking at me, and I went, oh no. 
She goes, are you falling? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it, it took like a good 15 seconds, but I was like, I was like, I was like I'm not there yet, but like, I also can't lift this foot. So, well, I'm just saying all this is like... It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> I just completely splashed down in the pool. <laughs> that was fun. Legitimate slow motion fall. <laughs> I show up more often. see what that is again, but um, to see people who have spent so much time in that world, 
uh, feel that it's a good idea to come back and be in it again, whether it's in the same capacity or a different capacity. Um, there's something special about that to know that they have, there had to have been something special enough about it the first time to want to say yes again. So uh, I always find that really kind of like a great a great day on set to be like, oh, I'm around someone who, who did this for the first time like I am now. Um, but it was it meant enough to them to come back and do it again. So that's always kind of a cool thing. Thank you. Definitely a cool bond that the rest of us don't particularly. But when you were a superhero, let's take it back. No. <laughs> All right. You guys look fun. Hello. Let's take your question. This question is for both of you. What's your favorite episode playing with Supergirl? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's a tough one. I'm, I'm really... I liked when you were Deacon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was fun. that was fun. I, I would say the most performance-wise, the most fun I had was that Super Roll episode of the crossovers. Um, just being able to play two characters that are so entirely different. Um, it was a lot of fun just showing up every day going, like, okay, today's completely different than yesterday. Um, I really enjoyed that. But I, I think I have to say, I immediately had so much fun uh, the very first episode. The first episode, there was just so many cool moments and it was, it was so easy to get along with Melissa and, and to have those kind of just like, hey cuz, what's up? Uh, it, it was just from the beginning, it was, it was, so, it was so light and fun and, uh, I really enjoyed it. So I don't know, I, I had such a great time with the first episode. I would say that was, that was special. I have two. I loved when we went to Maldoria. Do you remember that one? Uh, Slaver's Moon. That was Kevin Smith's first episode. And we had so much fun shooting that episode because it felt like we were on Star Trek all of a sudden because we were on a different planet and there were aliens and it was so cool. Um, and we had all these cool Star Wars references, that was really fun. And then, my second favorite episode that we've done, you haven't seen yet. And it is very Red Daughter centered, and it is really cool, and I loved working on it. Can't tell you. <laughs> that is a professional right there. Total cliffhanger, total teaser, and now you don't have to watch it. Do you guys have a favorite episode, just out of curiosity? Is there one that stands out to you? My guys? favorite is Red K. Cara. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Evil Cara. Oh, you guys are great. Thank you so much. That's a great question. Yes. Hi. 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 Um, I love this show. Thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs> I have two questions for Supergirl. Okay. Uh, first one is... I bet it was like, it was super fun to be Supergirl. Uh, you do an amazing job at it. Thank you. If you could have Supergirl's powers in your life for one day, what would you do? What superpower would you use the most and why? I'd probably fly the most. I, that's, I always say that. Um, Cause I, I, she can see the world in like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> If she wants to go try like street food in uh, Thailand, she can like just fly on over there. Um, so I'd probably fly the most, and that's what I would do, I think. I think I'd go see all the places in the world that I'd never gotten to see, but I wanted to. And then the second question is, uh, whose girlfriend would, did you like to be better, James or Monel? <laughs> James and Kara was so short-lived, and it kind of like fizzled out before it even really began. So I have to say Monel. Thank you. Stop! This is kind of surprising at the end there. I like that. You guys are keeping everybody on their toes. Yes. So this question is for Melissa. Although you're really cool, Tyler. <laughs> so I'm going to diverge from Supergirl a little bit. You were in one of my favorite movies last year, Sun Dogs, which was oh, amazing. Great. And you were in um, Whiplash, right. that was directed by Damon Chazelle. And I mentioned that I love the Red K. Cara episode. You have such a large range 
uh, for your acting. So I was wondering, what is something that you would like to do in the future? Would you like to? Most of those characters, except for Red K. Carr, were very like almost innocent, light, kind of doe-eyed, and same with like Kara. So would you like to play something a little darker in the future? Or would you like to stay on this path, or would you just want to explore everything? Oh, I think I I don't really think I have any definition of a path I want to take. It's, it's, and I think you can attest to this too, it's more like a feeling you get when you know there's something you want to try to take on, or if it's a challenge you want to set for yourself. So I don't know, whatever, whatever the wind brings my way um, is what I want to do. And what was it like working with David Chanel? Because he's an excellent director, so I was just wondering. He's really wonderful. And it was his first feature film, so he was really, you would never have guessed that it was his first time directing a feature film, but he was also only 28 when he did that movie, and we had a really short amount of time to shoot, and I only worked for two days, but he was like so collaborative, and really creative, and such a visionary. He knew exactly what he wanted, but yet he still allowed us to play. Um, really fulfilling experience for me. One of my most favorite jobs ever. Thank you. to work 
with Vanessa and everyone else um, in the Supergirl cast and um, working with um, Grant and everyone else? Um, I will say, having been on the show like Team Wolf for a while, knowing how tight our group got, um, anytime you go on to a new set, it's kind of like the new guy. Uh, you're, you're always aware that there is that chemistry with everybody who's already there. Um, and sometimes the set is very welcoming, and sometimes the set is very like, hey, good to have you here, but, you know, we're doing our thing. Um, and, and that's fine, this is just, that's how it's just how some sets are. Um, but this set was so welcoming, everybody was so sweet. I was really lucky to be able to get a um, oh, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was only really lucky to go to Comic Con with these guys before we shot anything. So I got a little bit of like, you know, kind of being part of the group before we started working, which was nice. Um, but I will say, like I said, everybody up there in Vancouver is, it's not that I don't face with them, just going to keep talking. I'm like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, but it, everybody up there really, truly is super sweet and really great. Um, and that's why I said any time I ask any problem, I'm always happy to because I really do enjoy the time up there. It's really good. Good, good, good. Okay, my second question is uh, for both of you. Can you guys describe the words for each other? Like, what are the words that you guys describe each other? Genuine, kind, and Hilarious. <laughs> I was going to say gentleman and kind, but I'll think of different. I would say very, he's very thoughtful, very artistic, and uh, he's pretty hilarious too. <laughs> and we don't necessarily be funny, we just do things that make yeah. everyone else laugh at our expense. Yes, especially in the trying to be funny. Yeah, like we're not going to go there like you should be stand up. And we're like, oh, you poor person. <laughs> Something horrible is going to happen to you. you so I'm just going to laugh at it. You made it out the front door today. <laughs> you beautiful disaster, you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love it. We've got about 10 minutes left, you guys. Let's keep it to maybe one question per person so we can move through that line if that works for you guys. Hi, um, my question's for Melissa. Um, how is it working with Katie and what's your favorite scene in terms of Katie's a joy to work yeah. with. She is. She is one of the smartest people I've ever met. Um, and, she, and she's also incredibly kind. And she is like a voracious reader. She's read. Any book you can think of, and you're like, oh, have you read this? You're like, oh yeah, I read it 10 years ago, and you're like, thanks. <laughs> um, but she is constantly giving books to people, and that is, I think, such a charming trait. She, you'll find like a little wrapped book in your trailer one day, and she does it for everyone. Everyone, even people that are only there for like three days. If she talks about a book with you, she'll give one to you. And I have always found that so thoughtful. Um, and my favorite scenes to do with her, I mean, she's such an amazing actress. Uh, but I love when Lena and Supergirl team up, and we always kind of joke that we feel like we <laughs> should be like an American national movie, like, yeah, <laughs> tell them, girl. Like, we always feel such girl power when we do these scenes where we like confront people together as Supergirl and Lena. So those are my favorite scenes. Forest Green.
however, I don't know how. So someone needs to help me. And then you too bad. Like it's not that I don't want people to see it, because it's pretty funny. Um we had a really good time. It was all the girls and we like I think the crew must have hated us because we'd be like, wait, wait, wait a second, we haven't finished our shot for our thing. <laughs> um I'm gonna try to figure out how to show it. Thank you. Yeah. That's too good. Yeah. Um, I really like your show, uh, and um uh, this question is for uh, Melissa. Um, I'm wondering, uh, what was it like working with Arrow and Flash on uh, your uh, episode, uh, Crisis on Earth X? That one was last year's crossover with the, the Nazis. Yeah. Uh, that was a very hard crossover to shoot because there was so much going on so much action that on any given day we would all show up. We still had a great time because it's always fun. And the Legends cast was in that one too, and I love hanging out with them. Brandon Ralph is so fun. Katie Lots is awesome. She's so she like does most of her own stunts. It's crazy. Um, but any given day, the scripts were so big we would all show up on set and be like, "What's happening? <laughs> Where are we now? Who am I?" <laughs> am I a Nazi today or am I dark today? <laughs> um, so that one was kind of overwhelming, but uh, we still had a really good time. And I fell asleep on set for a while. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, this is Benoist. My daughter, Evelyn, she's 16, she's a big fan of yours, and she has an interest in acting as well. What advice would you give a young lady that's interested in acting? Stay true to yourself. Do not lose yourself whatsoever. Anything that you're insecure about, anything that you um, are working on in yourself, like just don't give up on that because that is what makes you you. And, and the, being an actor is not an easy thing. It's full of a ton of rejection, but I think um, if you are comfortable with who you are as a, a person, it can't touch you and, and you will go places and find some happiness. Thank you. Good luck to you both. Superman. It's not a thing. 
So for me, I have to prepare that same way. So um, I approach it that way. And, uh, and again, you know, we kind of we said, you know, we're aware there's something going on over at, with the films, um, but we're doing our thing, and this is what we think works for what this show is and how this character fits into this world. So for me, um, <clears throat> sure, I knew comparisons would come up and things like that, but at the end of the day, those things you have no control over. And I'm learning in life that you worry about the things that you can control and the rest of it, you kind of just have to let it be. Otherwise, you'll be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you doing Supergirl. Thank you, guys. 